buy a business. This is the only time I've ever kicked anybody out. If you're watching <laughs> this, we're still upset about whatever she's about to tell us. Um, and I don't care. You know who you are. I don't care. And she either. probably still has the mug. Ick, ick, Yes, ick. that's a big ick. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited today because we have Michelle Caruana with us and she is from New York and she's got a very interesting story. So I'm gonna let her introduce herself real quick and then we're gonna get into all of the juicy questions that I know you guys want us to answer. You and I till the end. So I opened my indoor playground all the way back in 2015 and after almost six years of ownership, we decided to sell and move on to other things. And now my full-time business is helping other indoor playground owners optimize their businesses. And my passion is really just helping other people live out that same dream that I was able to. So I'm really excited to kind of take a step back and revisit the ownership days. This is gonna be really fun because we were talking off camera. We both have so many juicy stories. Yes. And she is willing to share all of them because she doesn't own her playroom anymore. And I'm willing to share all of them because I'm, I'm who I am. So this is gonna be really fun. I'm really excited. So we're gonna jump into all of the questions. I asked you guys over on Instagram and on the community tab to just literally ask everything you've been wanting to know. Sloan's super fun channel wants to know if we ever wish we didn't own our small businesses. Yes, pretty much every day, especially <laughs> when I was in the thick of it. So I opened my business when my son was eight months old. Oh my gosh. And then I got pregnant almost immediately after opening. Oh wow. And it was a tough second pregnancy. It was a tough birth. It was a tough infant experience. So I definitely had those days where I wish I could have just had one of those businesses where I could just take time off. Yeah. But with a brick and mortar business, you know, even if you're not working, those bills keep on coming. Oh, yeah. Or and like where you could call off and yeah. like make it somebody else's problem. Like right. I'm not coming in today, find somebody to cover my shift. Yes. And if it's not a customer issue, it's a building issue. So we were constantly oh, dealing with snow removal, mm -hmm. roof leaks, plumbing issues. So what a lot of people don't realize is that you always have to be on, Yeah. even when you're on vacation. There's no turning off the phone. No, Never. even when you're not working, even if your team is there, mm -hmm. it's so much more involved than I think a lot of people realize. And as a new mom, somebody who is, you know, trying to navigate motherhood, it was super difficult. So That's I, hard. I loved the experience and I don't regret a single day of it. We still look back on all the memories every single day and the pictures, but there were definitely days. Oh, I mean, sure. more often than not, where I was like, There's what the heck time. am I doing? Like, yeah, I always say that. <laughs> Who let me buy a business? Who thought this was a good idea? Yes, and a lot of people come in and they're like, I could do this. Oh, yeah. You know, this is so easy. They see us behind the desk drinking coffee, but they don't know, you know. I was crying three minutes earlier in the employee's closet because my toilet <laughs> overflowed. Yes, or like, <laughs> we wake up at four to like answer messages or we get like, Mean comments on Instagram. I, I don't wake up till <laughs> seven thirty. Do not call me before seven thirty. <laughs> well, but I do understand. Yes, yes. yes. It's, it's I a often lot. stay up late thinking about everything I got. I have to do the next day. It's a lot. And there's no one to like defer to. Like it's just me. My husband has a full time job. I mm -hmm. don't even have a manager. Like it is just me. So there's no deferring to anybody. If your employee calls out, you are then turning your car around from wherever you were yep. just going. So I oftentimes wonder, what did I get myself into? Who let me buy a business? Why am I doing this? But then I remember, I don't ever want to work for anybody else again. Yes. And I can't imagine doing anything else or having a boss. Yes. Never, never again. So there are days where I regret it, but there's no way I would ever not. Even with all the ups and downs, like I said, it was still worth oh, for every sure. single day. I, I'm ruined. I will never be able to have a boss again. Like I am yes. ruined. Michelle Leal wants to know, how do we not get burnt out? How do you keep going, especially on those days where nobody comes in? How do I prevent burnout? I don't think I've learned how to do that yet. I still experience burnout. I have a hard time turning off. I do try to take days where the business is closed and I don't respond to Facebook messages. I don't respond to emails. I try to just enjoy time with my family, but I have yet to learn how to not experience burnout with the business. With social media, I took the first two years and I never took a day off. I was so scared that if I didn't post, I'd become irrelevant. People wouldn't follow me anymore. The next big thing would happen and I was so terrified. But now that I've built this amazing community, I feel like I can take a day off and they are so kind and so sweet and they just support me when the next video goes up. Yeah, absolutely. And I have a similar <laughs> answer. It's just burnout is almost inevitable and you yeah. almost have to reach that point of burnout to figure out how to avoid it in the future. Mm -hmm. So for me, kind of what you were saying is it's all about setting boundaries. 
So if I want to unplug at 8 p.m., I just have to put my phone away. Yeah. Or I have to put my computer away. Or I have to log out of Instagram and have our manager access it. Or else it's never ending. Like, this is my personal life mm -hmm. and I have to keep it separate. So once I figured out how to set that boundary and also how to not be present physically in the business yeah. all the time, that's the only time that you I was really able to draw that boundary and kind of resist that burnout because it's so easy to fall into that trap yeah. of wearing all the hats and you just can't do it. If no. you want to do this for It's hard. Yeah. Years. You've got to, yeah. So I it's it's something I'm always learning and evaluating and dealing with, but I'm not perfect at it yet and I will be up till 9 a.m., 10 a.m. <laughs> or 9 a.m. 9 p.m. scrolling, reading, yes. watching. It happens. It's well, it's we'll get better. Nature. We'll get better with age. Beatrix says, what is the scariest thing about buying a business? I feel like ours are gonna be very different because I bought mine in July of 2020. So the scariest thing about me buying a brick and mortar is I had no background. I had no idea what I was doing and I bought a social kids business during a pandemic. So that was by far the scariest. What was your scariest? I went from having a corporate job that mm -hmm. had a very steady, reliable income, amazing benefits, mm -hmm. steady hours to the complete opposite. Oh, yeah. So no reliable income, no steady hours and no benefits. So it was just a completely different lifestyle shift that yeah. I think our family really had to adapt. But Going from a two, you know, working parent household where our kids were in daycare to a, you know, more entrepreneurial lifestyle, it was a huge it's, shift. It's a big difference. So that was the biggest, that was the biggest, that was the scariest thing on our end is we just didn't know what to expect. Yeah. And we didn't know how to adapt our lifestyle to this new way of living, especially because my husband was traveling a lot and it was just a completely new lifestyle that we had to learn. Yeah. I'm still learning. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Leah Kate wants to know our worst customer experience. Do you want to go first? Sure. Okay. I have a whole video about this on my channel. Mm -hmm. But we had this one woman, and I swear I have nightmares about this woman to this day. And if you're watching okay. this, we're still upset about whatever she's about to tell us. I'm so upset. I have not only one video about mm -hmm. the experience, but several follow ups. We'll link it. I'll have to link it. It's a doozy. But basically, this woman was an unlimited member, mm -hmm. so she had a membership, but she thought that that meant she could use our business at any time, regardless of our open hours, regardless of our policies. Oh, wow. So she took it as like, I can freely unlimited. use this facility as, okay. as I wish. So to give you an example, she for our unlimited members, we used to give mugs, mm -hmm. and we would say you can fill up your coffee. Oh, she would come that. during birthday parties. She would come during private events. She would come. To fill up her coffee? Yeah. Oh, all the time. And we would kick her out. We yeah. Would her. Well, we would see her husband would pull up. Uh huh. And we would see it immediately. All right. And someone would try to run out, but she would sneak. She was snow. Was so your coffee sneaky. like the best coffee in the world? No, it was just free to her. Wild. And we were, I know you're not, but we were a nut free facility. Mm -hmm. We were very allergy focused. Mm -hmm. And this woman would literally walk around with like a bag of almonds in her hand. And oh we warned her at least five times. I feel like experiences like this are why I'm not nut free and allergy free because I mean, people are me generally out. good, but this person was not good. And yeah. again, because I'm closed, I feel totally comfortable saying this. I don't care. If you're watching this, you know who you are. <laughs> Um, and I don't care. You know who you are. I don't care. And she either. probably still has the mug. That's but she insane. Would, yeah, she just had no regard for our space. Mm -hmm. She viewed our membership as an excuse to treat our space as she, as she wished. So not just coming in off, on off hours, not just right. having whatever food she cared for. She would leave a huge mess. Ugh. Her toy, her son would break things. Her son would hit other kids. <gasps> That's and hard. I am so sympathetic. As a mother of an autistic son, mm -hmm. I'm very sympathetic to behavioral issues, yeah. children on the spectrum. It's when the parents aren't supervising is exactly. when I had an issue. Yeah, that's what makes it difficult. And so she would Because kids off, are going to be kids. Right, she would go off in the other area, completely face down in the phone, mm -hmm. and we would approach her and say, hey, you know what, it seems like so-and-so is really struggling today. Like, maybe you can try and redirect. Because That's a really our, nice way of saying our it. play area wasn't staffed. So we relied on the parents yeah. to intervene when there was an issue. So we would approach her and we would say, you know, so-and-so's having a hard time, maybe you want to redirect. And she would just act like we were 
the biggest inconvenience in the world. Oh my gosh, wild. So, so she, she so thought she unlimited viewed, meant you were going to babysit yeah. her kids too. So she viewed our unlimited membership as, I now own this piece, basically. The coffee thing is just blowing my mind. Oh, and it, would be, just... it was for months and months. And honestly, one of my biggest mistakes as an owner is it took me way too long to ban her. Yeah. Um, I yeah. allowed it for so long, and it was like the bane of my staff's existence. Mm -hmm. We would see her pull up or her husband pull up because her husband did it too. It was not just her. And everyone would – it would be not just a collective sigh amongst the staff. It would be the customers you're, too. You're like customers because that it, it was Because that her son had behavioral issues, mm -hmm. and my son has behavioral issues. So I know when we go to a play space, I have to be on top of him. Mm -hmm. I have to monitor him. I have to intervene. He's learning. He's still growing, especially like pre-diagnosis. She did not share those feelings. <laughs> so once it started really affecting the mental health of our staff and yeah. the other customers, that's when I finally banned her, but it took way too long and I wish I could go back in time. I, and that's what I posted that video series about. Like is, your biggest regret. Right, because I posted the video right when it was fresh. Mm -hmm. And then I posted a follow-up like six months later and I was like, man, I made some big mistakes yeah. in handling this customer. I think it's easier to like deal with it when it's like you having to right. deal with it. But once you see like your staff and your customers, I think that's what makes it easier Mama Bear comes to out. like ban somebody. Yeah, Mama Bear comes out. And yeah. then I'm like, wait a second. Mama Bear is like exactly what happened with my bad customer experience. Can't wait to hear it. <laughs> I did a video about it as well. I did an entire video. This is the only time I've ever kicked anybody out. And I think we have another question about if we've ever kicked anybody out, which I feel like is gonna be yes. the same answer. So this was a mom who brought her younger son and I'm still open, I just don't care. <laughs> if she sees this because it got wild. She was like right over by that table over there and my son Charlie was playing and she started talking about Santa. Oh no. And things about Not Santa. Santa. <laughs> she started talking about things about Santa and how her oldest no longer believes and how that they're just giving up on it. And my son no. was like four, sitting no. right next to her. And at the desk, I was like, ma'am, <clears throat> ma'am. And this woman, accused me correctly of eavesdropping and said that everything she's talking about is none of my business and I was like wild because I pay the rent so everything that happens within these four walls is my business so I just asked her to stop talking about it so then she walked back here and she started yelling to her mom about me and and then I said ma'am I didn't yell at you I just asked you to stop saying that she started screaming at me from across and my son is here this woman started screaming at me while my son was here. And at that moment, I was like, oh, heck no. I said, all right, I'm gonna ask you to leave now. It is time for you to leave. And she was well, then I want my money back because she had only been here for like five minutes. Like five minutes. This was when I turned into a little bit petty. Her mother had paid. She didn't pay, her mom paid. And I said, I am not refunding you because you did not pay. If your mother would like a refund, I will hand her the money, but I will not be handing you the money. Uh, girl after my own heart. I know. So I did refund to the mom. I don't think I sh should have had to. Sometimes refunded, you just gotta. But I just wanted her to go because she's yeah. yelling at me. I didn't want it to escalate. My no. son was here, but she needed to leave the building. There was only yeah. one other mom here and she didn't quite like know what was going on. But to this day, like my regulars who watch my channel and like see this will be like, man, Seer, I wish I was there that day. Yeah, I probably would have been braver if like a regular was here that I know. But I tell my staff all the time, if somebody gets like upset with you and they start yelling at you, if they make you feel uncomfortable, they make other people feel uncomfortable, I give my staff the ability to ask anybody to leave. I go, you have my full support. I am 100%. And that's so important. Yeah. The customer is not always right. No. 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 Cassie wants to know what's the most we've ever spent on a toy or something in the playroom. We talked about this briefly. I bought an established playroom. You had to build your playroom. Yes, I built it from scratch. <laughs> so most of the stuff was in here and most of the stuff I was able to find on Facebook Marketplace. The most I ever spent on something would probably be this mural behind us. Beautiful. But worth Gorgeous. it. But the most expensive toy has got to be the kitchen. I've shared it before. It is a four piece set from uh, Community Playthings, which is a nursery daycare toy company. Like it's yeah. built for those types of um, facilities. It was, I believe 1600 for all four pieces. In the playroom community, that is pennies compared yes. to what some people have paid. Yes. So one of my mistakes is I spent a little bit too much on some of our play structures. And again, I can say this now that we have sold our business and those play homes are in a new loving home. And 
it was worth what you paid. Just let me say yeah. that. <laughs> to whoever bought that, it was worth what you paid. But we did Lilliput Play Homes and we spent $18,000 on just one play home. And the other one was $12,000. And Ooh. it was, at the time, that was kind of the standard. A lot of places have them. They're beautiful. I've seen them on camera right. so many times. They're yes. very cool. They're a very big impact. $18,000. The problem is, is... It's like how much my first car cost. <laughs> <laughs> and the wear and tear is real. Like I yeah. see, it's so funny because I get to visit play spaces mm -hmm. so much. My job is so fun because all I do is coach indoor playground owners now, but I see so many of these play homes on social media and I was so guilty of doing this too. Mm -hmm. I would post these beautiful pictures and I would, you know, touch them up a little bit, but then I go see them in person. They deteriorate so fast. We used to have to paint ours like every six months. And this is nothing against Lilliput. I think their homes are absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. But for anybody looking to invest in them, you have to know that it will require constant touch-ups, constant repair. Yeah. A lot of their materials are definitely meant to be more residential in yes. nature. So while I think they do have a great impact and they offer amazing imaginative play, just know that they're not going to be as durable as just a plain wooden set. One thing that you were saying is about the wear and tear of them. I post videos constantly of like, what did they break now? And people are like, how are your toys breaking all the time? Maybe buy higher quality toys, buy more expensive toys. Let me tell you, it doesn't matter how much you no. spend. These kids are gonna break everything. $18,000 within months. Yeah. I was calling them and I was like, everything is broken. Yeah. We have to start over. Everything breaks because eventually. what people don't realize is a lot of people would come in and they would be like, oh, well we have this toy mm -hmm. and it lasted Ten years. I hear that a lot about my little tykes cars. They'll be like, we've had mine for it's six different. grandchildren. It's like, different. I see hundreds of kids. Right. A and week. people, yeah. Constant use is very different. Very from different. Home use. Whew, yeah, you have to time. have, if you want to own this business, mm -hmm. you have to have a budget every single month to toy replacement. Yeah. And it, it's gonna be more than you think it's gonna be. Oh, yeah. It's ridiculous. Michaela Sullivan wants to know what's the weirdest thing a kid has ever brought into the playroom. You might not have an answer for this, but I pulled this I one. actually think I do. Okay, I was gonna say, I have a really good one for this. So we had a little guy bring in an, aeros an aerosol deodorant container. It was empty. And he, for some reason, his mom told me that he latched onto it like three days prior and she could not let him like give it up. And she asked if it was okay if he brought it in. And I said, well, if it's empty, absolutely. So this kid literally just carried around his deodorant can while I he played. It. it was the funniest, silliest little thing that made this kid so happy that I was like, of course you can bring it in. I mean, he couldn't spray it. He couldn't That's hurt so anything, sweet. but that has got to be the weirdest thing a kid has like had as a comfort item in the playroom. I love that. It was so silly. It was so cute. <laughs> Our weirdest thing, people used to always bring like kid potties. Even though we had like a kid lid, people would With always bring, lid. yeah, people would always bring like their own potties and then want to use it like on the playroom. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> and they'd be like, I don't get it. The amount of people have had to ask to like, please don't change your baby on my toys, on the table, in yep. the cafe, next to this lady that's eating has like blown my mind. Yep. So Doris Fashion wants to know how we remain so calm. I don't. You don't? No. I've never yelled at a kid. I've never yelled at a parent. I have a really bad temper. I am known, I don't have them in right now, but I'm known for my AirPods. Like it is like yes. a running joke that I wear them 24 seven. I literally sleep on them. So that is how I remain calm is I just try to breathe. And then honestly, truly what I try to remember is that I don't know everybody's story. Right. I don't know what that Absolutely. mom dealt with that night before. She might be exhausted because her baby kept her up and staring at her phone for the first time in four days because she has been up all night with the kids. Their kids are throwing tantrums and he might be throwing a tantrum and throwing toys and hitting other kids because he has a new baby or they just moved houses Absolutely. or, you know, so I just try to remember that I don't know what that mom is going through and that the way that they're acting in the playroom today is not a reflection on who they are unless they're stealing coffee every single day. <laughs> oh. For the most part though, like you said, yes. most people are good. So I just try to remain calm because I was a new mom. I have two boys, I understand, and I have AirPods that are noise canceling. Yeah, and I think <laughs> that was a big disadvantage for me because mm -hmm. I opened my business when I was in the thick of it. Yeah. I was in the no sleep. I had a very traumatic birth. So you were I exhausted. Had... You were the tired mom. Exactly. So I think that's why my patience mm -hmm. was often so low. And that kind of goes back to the burnout question. Yeah. I had to set boundaries and that was the only way to remain calm. 
Like when I would get a negative email, when I would get a negative review, oh, I, I would immediately want to spiral. I spiral. Fly off I the spiraled the other day with you. Yes. I messaged you. I was spiraling. I wasn't gonna mention it, but <laughs> I. But that was me. Yeah. And I. I often wonder, like, how different my business could have been. Yeah. I mean, it was. It ended up being, you know, very successful, and we sold for a profit. But I often wonder how much my patience would have been better. Yeah or how much my mindset or energy would have been better if I would have just waited until my kids were a little bit older. My only way to remain calm was to hire a manager. That I was still it. haven't done that. <laughs> because the managers are much less emotionally attached yes. to the business. It's the emotional attachment yes. that nobody understands. If I get a negative email or a negative review it's or like, like a negative Google review, my husband's, like like, you. Yeah, my husband's like, calm down, it's not that big of a deal. But I take it so personally because this yes. is personal. Because it might say grandma's playroom, but everybody knows that grandma's playroom right. is Sierra Zagari. Right. It is personal. And we often think of it as like an extension of ourselves. Yeah. Like, this or like is my third like, baby. Exactly. This is exactly. my third baby. Exactly. So when someone says mean stuff about my third baby it's online, the, I cry. It all comes down to the fact that we care yeah. so deeply. Natalie Hernandez wants to know what our icks are, but I would like to preface this by saying, I, all the time, 99% of the people that come in this business are incredible. The only reason I have this business is because of the community, the parents that come in, and I truly love everybody. And I love to um, reward my amazing clients and customers yes. by giving them a little bit more freedom, allowing them to have play dates on days that we're not open. Like I love to give back to the customers that are great, but sometimes we do have customers that give us the ick. Obviously, yep. and um, we're going to talk about some of those icks right now. Yeah. So one of my biggest icks is when they're signing in to like the waiver and I'm like trying to like tell them like, hey, welcome in, uh, here are the rules. And like, I know, I know, I know, I know. And I'm like, okay. I'm and those are the people that don't follow the rules. I know, but like also I'm a human <laughs> speaking. Like, oh my gosh, I'll be like, have they turned two yet? We know the rules. I know, and you are so sweet checking people in. I got to see it today. I and try to be because I really, truly love every single person that comes through the door because they're no, paying my that. bills and they are choosing to support me when there's so many other places they could go. Right. So I love sharing all the wonderful things that my um, customers do, but we got to admit yeah. that the things that do best on the internet are the bad things that they do. Yes. So like I just did a POV where this dad was like, why can't they go in the baby area? And I'm like, well, because they're five and six, they're not babies. And he's like, well, they're gonna climb in there anyway. And I said, well, well they can't, you have to watch them. He goes, I have to watch them? You're not gonna watch them? Ick. Yeah, it <laughs> you have to watch them. Adults that read signs and literally read them out loud and then choose to disregard them. Yes, or they'll be like, oh, it's fine. They'll say, oh, it's fine. It's fine for you. Right. Are you responsible for all the other people in I here? I know, and I and all of my rules are based upon the I safety of other people's kids. Say, I'm it's, not just some right. dictating tyrant yeah. who wants to like show You're how not. much support, how much control I have. I just want everyone to be safe and have fun, and I want the toys to yes. last as long as possible, so you can keep coming in. Right. But yes, yeah, so we talked about a story about how somebody read. Yeah. My no baby sign, read the no baby sign to her kid and then still let her kid in. And then I looked like the bad person right. making the kid leave because they were too old for the baby area. Right. And something that I try to always tell myself is mm -hmm. what you permit, you promote. Oh, so if, if one like person sees a mm -hmm. five year old in the baby area, that's free, free range. Mm -hmm. And like you said, all of our policies are for the good of everybody, right. even the if they can't realize it. Kids, right. yeah. Because if they break all our toys and mm -hmm. we can't afford to replace them and we go out of business. And then there's nowhere for you to go in the winter. Who does that benefit? No one. Nobody. Nobody. So adults that read signs and then, and then still blatantly break the rule. disregard them. Or yeah. even worse, who ask about a policy. You tell them. You educate them and mm -hmm. say, this is why we do this. And then say, well, not my kid. Right. Or it's just going to be a minute. I was saying, little Johnny. Is she's not, not going to. She's not. They're she not going to. She would gonna, never throw yeah. a toy off the tower. She can do that. Right. When yeah. you permit, you promote. Okay. So I like that. I, I like always. That. So I would always ask myself if I permit this, mm -hmm. what am I saying to my other customers? Right. And why does little Johnny get to break the rules when the mom who comes in all the time, who supports you, who's so incredible, right. and she makes her kids follow the rules? Like, what is right. that saying to your customers that are following? Yeah, goals. and as a mom of an autistic child, we mm -hmm. struggle with this, admittedly. And I have to go to play spaces knowing, mm -hmm. okay, he's going to need a little bit of extra support. There might be a meltdown. We always ask the rules and policies ahead of time so mm -hmm. that we can prepare. 
I just know that I have to do that as yeah. a parent. But and as a playroom owner, yeah. meltdowns do not. Right. I don't judge meltdowns. You would rather they don't me meltdown. right. meltdowns don't bother me. Children having meltdowns is normal. Yes, and you're prepared. Parents you have, having meltdowns. Yes, is not normal. Oh. <laughs> no ick. That's ick, an ick. 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 Yes. Parents having meltdowns. Yes. It's never the kids. A lot of people get really self conscious mm -hmm. when their child breaks down. Yeah. But that's to be expected. We would not open this type of yeah. business if we didn't expect I don't, to. I don't expect a three year old to be emotionally intelligent But we expect intelligent to be. enough. Yes. <laughs> we expect parents to be. Yes. Ick, ick. Yes. Ick. That's a big ick. But okay, then you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna end this video on a good note. One of my green flags is when I'm at the front, I'm checking a parent in, and the parent picks up her kid to look me in the eye and say, "Okay, listen to what Sierra is about to say. No toys on the tower, blah blah blah." And then the parent repeats it to the kid, and I'm like, "Oh my gosh, this is so yes. good!" And Love I just it. know it's gonna be a great day Love to it. play. Yes. Ooh, that was a lot of questions. This is gonna be a really long video and we had so many questions that we could definitely do a part two. Yeah. So if this video does good, we will absolutely do a part two, yeah. but we're gonna be doing some videos on your channel as well. Yeah. So I will be linking that all below and I'm gonna be linking all of your information. So if you guys really do wanna open an indoor playground, I am not the one for you, she is. If you want behind the scenes POVs and silly content, that's me. <laughs> So if you guys like this video, we'd like it if you gave it a thumbs up. And if you loved it, I would love it if you would subscribe. Hope you guys have a wonderful day. And don't forget, wash your hands. Bye, guys. Nice to meet you. You and I till the